Welcome back to the LR build. I'm going to show the progress made so far in outfitting the frame with suspension and brake components. This motorcycle build is a big step up for me in quite a few areas, particularly the suspension wheel and tyre components. So when I reach an area where I know I'm lacking, I reach out to people to learn and trade skills. As you'll see later in the video, by taking a humble man's approach, you can meet some truly amazing people. So for the suspension and braking side of things, I reached out initially to what I like to call the brain trust of Alf and Tony. Between the pair of them, they have many years of building, fixing and maintaining motorcycles and many other machines. The power of this motor puts it squarely in the electric motorcycle category and as a result should be treated as such. I don't have an exhaustive budget for this bike, so if I make silly rookie mistakes with selecting components, then things will either be delayed or be costly, probably both. This is the reason why, unlike with my other builds, I don't have a small pile of components ready to go. I wanted to physically have the motor and modified swing arm first. Tony's idea was to use some of the components from a downhill bike to essentially mock up the whole setup and see how it looks. From here, we can calculate exactly what we want the geometry of the bike to be, and from there go and source the optimum suspension components, both for fit, performance and price. So this rear shock we fitted is a temporary one that gets us a nice look at the geometry of the bike. This older Fox shock from an early 2000s downhill bike is 200 millimeters eye to eye and leaves a decent gap to the motor. I still have to mount foot pegs, so I need to leave room for that. What strikes me already is just how well balanced the bike is. You can rock it back and forth with just one finger. This will change with the addition of other components but it's looking like the bike will have an excellent center of gravity. The more difficult part of the suspension package is the front end. I was describing the different suspension options to the brain trust. From what I can see, there's not much middle ground. There's the ultra cheap zoom, the somewhat cheap DNM, and then the super expensive, like your RockShox Boxer and Fox 40. There are a few other options, but nothing that really stood out as a buy this right now kind of thing. Tony and Alf suggested that rather than looking at top of the range stuff intended for downhill bikes, or even anything intended for downhill bikes, perhaps look into the hardware used with the lower power motorcycles, such as a 125, 116cc. Apparently, there are just a ton of front ends in people's shops and garages all over the world, just waiting to be repurposed. Which is great, because one of the things I want to achieve with this bike is to make it replicable around the world by other people. It should be buildable by people with a modest budget. The idea of repurposing and reusing these front ends to use with this kind of bike is very attractive. So having had a look at the shape of the bike, Tony put me in touch with his friend David, who he thought might be able to help with the front end. So we carted the frame and motor over to his house. David has to be one of the most interesting people I've ever met. His house looks like a regular Canadian one, but inside his shop, it's like an Aladdin's cave for fabrication. All over are the amazing projects that David's done over the years. Pride of place is this hand-built supercar based on the 1962 McLaren. David also felt that repurposing a set of forks from a motorcycle was a good way to go. He's offered to fabricate parts that may be needed to make a set of forks work with the frame. David is an accomplished gunsmith among his many trades, so this is small beer to him. In return, I hope to help him by 3D printing some mouldings to help with his fiberglass work. The next stage for the front end of the bike is to basically go around all the local motorcycle custom shops, repair places, dealers, that sort of thing, and see what there is. Because usually bikes don't stop getting ridden because the front end went. It's because the motor blew or repairs became too costly to continue. So this is to be continued video. I feel real lucky to be able to learn from the experience of Alf, Tony and David. I'm really looking forward to working with them. The bike build can only benefit from over a century of combined expertise. I hope that I can communicate some of this knowledge through my videos as the bike takes shape. I'll be posting photos from the weekend's front end hunt on Discord. Cheers.